Okay, welcome back. So let's look at an example of running one of these goodness of fit tests. So I think it would be a pretty logical hypothesis that each day of the week, your babies are equally likely to be born on. Okay, so say you take a sample of 700 babies and you want to investigate this hypothesis. Right? So here's our data if you want to follow along. All right, so we've got n equal to 700 and we have the count observed on each of these days, how many were, were born on each of these days over the course of a week. All right, so we want to see our null hypothesis here is going to be that the proportion of babies born on each day is equal. In other words, what, what we're saying is the data fits a uniform distribution. Okay, so our null hypothesis would that be P1 equal to P2 all the way through P7, or we could have said P Monday equal to P Tuesday equal to P Wednesday through P Sunday, equal to 1 over 7, or 1 7, right? That's our uniform probability, right? So here's a graph of a uniform distribution. This is what we would expect it to look like. Okay, so our alternative would then be that they are not all equal to 1 7. Right, here's the actual observed data. So just looking at these graphs, right, we see that our graph definitely doesn't look perfectly uniformly distributed. Right, so upon visual examination, what do we see? We see Saturdays a little lower than what we expected. We see Tuesdays higher than what we expected. Okay, but is it significantly higher? Is it significantly lower? Is there actually cause for some sort of concern here? All right, so let's think about our conditions. Well, we needed expected greater than five in each of these. 700 times one seventh is 100, so we're, we're fine there. All right, so let's calculate our expected, right? 700 total, if they're all equal, we'd expect 100 on each day of the week, 700 divided by seven. All right, so to calculate my test statistic, I take my observed, so that would be, in this case, 84 minus 100 squared over 100, and it gives me 2.56. Right? I do that all the way down the list, and then I sum it all up to get my test statistic, 19.12. So there's my test statistic. Now that looks like a really big test statistic, but if you're not familiar with the chi-squared distribution, remember it. It's not symmetric around zero. It's, it behaves a little differently. So maybe that 19.12 is significant. Maybe it's not. Let's find a p-value. Here's how, in probability notation, how we would write that p-value. Remember, we're always going to treat these as right tail, right? Because our chi-squared test statistic is always positive. So what about our degrees of freedom? Well, there's seven days of the week, seven groups. K is seven. We didn't have to estimate any parameters here, right? Seven days of the week, one seventh. 7 minus 1 equals 6. So let's look at our chi-squared table a little bit. We could estimate this with our table. So our degrees of freedom again was 6. All right, so our test statistic was 19.12. Notice this table gives us the area to the right. So if I go out here, degrees of freedom 6, 19 is somewhere out here. So that's telling me that my p-value right, is, is pretty small. So this p-value is something pretty small, less than 0.05. Right, if we want an exact, we can use some sort of technology. So here I've got the data in Excel. Right, so what if I want to just find that p-value? Right, I can go to chi. Now remember, the just the dot dist function in Excel is going to give you the area to the left. So we want chi dist right tailed. Test statistic was 19.12, my degrees of freedom, 6, and there we go. Really small p-value, just like we thought. So here's a picture of our p-value as well. All right, so let's draw our conclusion. We had a big test statistic, small p-value, we rejected the null. Okay, so when we just had one or maybe two groups, right, it was enough to just say, okay, we reject and be done with it. Right? We wanted to frame it in the context of our question, but it, it was enough to just be done with it there. 
All right, but here, remember, if we said we reject, all right, well, why did we reject? We always need to follow up on something when we have multiple groups. So let's look and see what we saw. Now, visually, we saw that Tuesday looked a little high, Saturday looked a little low, right? And we see that here with this large red test statistic, this large contribution to our test statistic, there's definitely something going on on Saturday. We've got less than we thought on Saturday, and we have way more than we got on Tuesday. Who knows why? So let's look at how to do this in Minitab. All right, so I've already got my data here in Minitab. So if we go here to Stat, we got to go to Tables. Right here we see a couple chi-squared tests. Now just make sure you're not looking here at chi-squared test for association. That's another test that we'll talk about in the future. We're doing a chi-squared goodness of fit test, so just one variable. All right. So we don't have the exact data. We don't want to click categorical data. We want to click observed count. Our observed counts is births. And we can tell Minitab the days are there as well. All right, now here's where we got to pay attention. We got to think about what is our null hypothesis. Okay, our null was that they are all equal. So we're going to choose this first option for equal. Now with the our alternative, if we want a different alternative, we can do this, but we'll, we'll see examples of that in the future for specific proportion or something like that. Okay, so our so we're going to stay with equal proportions, and we're going to see the default output that Minitab gives. Okay, so here's the default output. So it does all the math that we just did, finds our test statistic that agrees with us, finds a small p-value. Nice thing about Minitab is it gives us a couple of these nice little graphs here. Okay. So let's look at these graphs more in detail. So here's the all the numerical output it gives us. Let's look at this first graph. All right, so in yellow are what we expected. Now we, we're saying uniform 100 in each one, and blue are what we observed. This is a good way of comparing expected and observed visually. And then it gives us a Pareto chart of our contributions to the test statistics. So it can really show us which ones we should be concerned about. All right, so again, here we found from the data, large test statistics, small p-value. It does actually appear, for whatever reason, that there's a difference in the days of the week with regards to babies being born on those days. All right, so thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.